Hey, let's talk civil chaos and even the possibility of revolution. In his article titled, A Precarious Revolution is Brewing, Charles Hugh Smith makes a fascinating comparison between the American Revolution and conditions in America today. And unfortunately, this is not a good thing to see. Here is the first paragraph, quote, the American Revolution arose not from politics, but from rapid social economic changes that revealed the precariousness of the colonist prosperity. Co conventional histories focus on the context of the Boston Tea Party, etc. But more important were the changes in social re relations and the impact of the economy moving from quasi-feudal forms of patronage to an economy of impersonal market forces. The political revolution was the result of profound shifts in social and economic structures." Close quote. The British government was acting without regard for the welfare of its American colonies, and the colonists were realizing that the London represented a real threat to their livelihood. The colonists were becoming prosperous, and the British government wished to rapaciously take that prosperity from them. At the same time, new ideas were reaching the average colonist. Individualism, reason, liberty, they were all capturing the thought and mind of the average person. So as a new economy was forming, new ideas were flooding in and the British government was failing to understand the new paradigm. And when the old ways of control stopped working, the British government just piled on more and more of the old ways of control. The whip used to work well at one time, until those being whipped realized that they could take away the whip from the hand of their abusers. The British quickly found themselves outnumbered and did not understand why until it was too late. And I'm still a bit peeved over the fact that the British brought that Hessian in who killed the first John Little in America. Then Charles Hugh Smith writes two, no, three paragraphs, quote, as I noted last week in What If Politics Can't Fix What's Broken, Politics, as practiced in a bygone era of stability, no longer offers any solutions to these profound disruptions. Middle ground has vanished and ideologies have become quasi-religious because they no longer offer any practical guidance to a society and economy that are being transformed by the fourth industrial revolution, resource depletion, and demographics. Once again, Americans are awakening to the precariousness of their prosperity and liberties and traditional forms of belonging, loyalty, and authority are unraveling. As the pie shrinks, the struggle to maintain one's own share at the expense of others becomes Darwinian. And so it's no surprise that finance and politics are increasingly winner-take-all or winner-take-most, zero-sum endeavors. The elite college admission scandals Scandal is a timely example of this dynamic. Those with $500,000 can bribe the right people in centralized hierarchy to get their little darling onto a winner-take-most career track." Close quote. Society is changing, and there's a growing view that the elites are keeping us from getting what we deserve. Up to this point, we were willing to see the elites take more than their fair share as long as our own prosperity was on the increase. But that has changed. The economic pie is shrinking, and the elites are still rapidly increasing their share of that pie, while the average person has no hope at all of any increase in prosperity. In fact, the hope of even holding on to what prosperity that they have is gone. Millennials have already given up hope of duplicating the prosperity of their parents, the baby boomers, and for Generation Y, well, they see the depressed view of their parents and even bleaker outlook of their own future. And what? What will Generation Y and Z do? Well, let me give you an, the end of this article. Quote, a precarious revolution is brewing as the old social, political, and economic structures unravel and fail. The sober politics of Compromise is giving way to the expedient politics of bread and circuses, borrowing whatever sums are needed to placate every corrupt parasitic elite and every demanding constituency. This is the pathway to financial ruin, as the currency will be destroyed by the politics of expediency. New social, political, and economic structures will arise that are stable 
because they reflect new realities. Describing these structures is the purpose of my books. Pathfinding our destiny, preventing the final fall of our democratic republic, money and work unchained, a radically beneficial world, automation, technology, and creating jobs for all. The future belongs to work that is meaningful. The politics of failed ideologies and financial expediency will not end well. Close quote. One thing is clear to me, the morons in Washington, D.C. do not understand the destruction that they have wrought in America. And those that do understand are so psychopathic that they just do not care about the suffering of their subjects. They're just like King George and how, they, and how he felt about the colonists 250 years ago. All of this sounds a lot like what Jesus was speaking about when he told his disciples about the last days. Quote, For ethnos shall rise against ethnos, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my namesake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Matthew 24, 7-12. Quote. I deliberately place the word ethnos in there instead of nation. Why? Because you understand that ethnos is the root of ethnic. You get that. And that is what Jesus meant when he said nation, or ethnos. And when the translators of the King James Version were translating that word ethnos, they understood that the word nation was the same as saying ethnic group. What Jesus was speaking of was revolution and the fracturing of countries along ethnic lines and countries that will rise up against each other. But that will only be the beginning as bad as things have been until now, you haven't seen anything yet. Please understand that devastation is coming. Even though Charles Hugh Smith compares our current situation to the American Revolution, what we will see won't be like that. And Charles understands that because he ends his piece with a picture of the Chinese Revolution. And you do not want the Chinese Revolution. No, seriously. It was bad, real bad, 60 million, 60 million dead bad. Okay, so hopefully you understand what Charles Hugh Smith said, and I hope that you read the article. But I want to add another dimension to all this, and it comes from someone who calls himself Hard Scrabble Farmer. And his article was titled, Five Reasons We're in This Mess. Hard Scrabble talks about the fourth turning. And that's a big deal, since it seems that we are right in one of those. If you don't know what the fourth turning is all about, listen up. Quote, in the book, which was written in the late 1990s, authors William Strauss and Neil Howe theorize that the history of civilization moves in 80 to 100 year cycles called secula. The idea behind this theory dates back to the Greek Greeks who believed that a given seculum's end would come ekpyrosis, or a cataclysmic event. This era of change is known as the fourth turning, and it appears we are in the midst of one right now. The last few fourth turnings that America experienced ushered, ushered in the Civil War and the Reconstruction Era, and then the Great Depression and World War II. Before all that, it was the Revolutionary War. Each fourth turning had similar warning signs, periods of political chaos, division, social and economic decay, in which the American people reverted from extreme division and were forced to reunite in the rebuild of a new future. But that only came after massive conflict. Today's divide among many Americans is strong. We are headed for a collision that will rip this country apart at the seams. The timing of the next fourth turning is now, and it could take at least another decade to complete the cycle. After the fourth turning, America will not be the America you are accustomed to today. So let us stop calling today the greatest economy ever and start preparing for turbulence. Close quote. I got that quote from an article written in October of last year called 
Most Americans see a sharply divided nation. The fourth turning is here. Unfortunately, that quote got it just a teeny tiny bit wrong. We aren't just facing turbulence. We're facing utter catastrophe and the rise of the Antichrist. This will be a horrendous and horrifying time.